Hey traders, it is 4.13 Wednesday. Um, late, even on the west coast where I live. Uh, just a quick video to recap. A couple of exciting things that happened in the chat room today. We had, last time I checked, 255, 257, 253 people. In spite of losing half of them in the morning because of technical difficulties, they all came back. Uh, thanks for hanging in there. Okay, so... We're looking at the S&P, and it kind of ended in that, first of all, the day was green. It was iffy in the morning. It was good in the pre-open, and then we slid before the open. We opened kind of reddish green. I think the small caps were leading the Russell. And then uh, we ended up pulling up a good one. So we had a lot of opportunities in today. It's kind of like we had everything. Um, the bears had a little bit uh, in the morning. The bulls had a good run, and then the, ba the bears had an opportunity at the end two and one in the middle but at the end the, the end one is pretty exciting i'll tell you why because we kind of traded it perfectly uh but not by sheer luck because of homework so let me walk you through what happened maybe we can pick up a trick or two for next time um this is the smp one minute chart so this is fast but the same concepts apply for any time frames five minutes five months five weeks a week daily whatever it's the same concept they, they repeat themselves. So this was the exciting part. Uh, we have a running joke uh, for some reason. We're not from Wall Street, but we do trade like um, pretty good against the Wall Street people. So this candle right there, you can see it. It starts up here, one candle for one minute. It starts up here. Actually, we were watching it on the 30 seconds and it ends down here. And that, we call that TTFM, the, the 10 till four madness. So 10 minutes before the market closes, on the the second they go just go crazy i don't know what it is the machines just go wacko so let's uh see if i can show you the 30 second chart this is that that candle we're talking about look from here and the exciting part is so this was the high of the day the uh 10 to 4 clicks it explodes pokes through the high of the day my read on it is they, they stopped everybody out. So if somebody was short into the close with 10 minutes to go, they would probably put an automatic, automatic stop. Hey, I will, I'm will. i okay short until they make a new high. Then I want out because I don't have time. They're going to blow me out, especially I'm doing op, if I'm doing options. So this spoke stopped everybody out, and then they immediately turn around and go whoop, <laughs> all the way down to here. So the market makers say, Tag, you're out. I'll take your money. Thank you. And ran away. So it was classic. Um, so I wasn't rooting for the bears, except for one reason. And I'll tell you later. That has nothing to do with the spy. Um, so anyway, so did we see it coming? All right. So let's see if we saw it coming. This was my chart to my team in the room on this green candle. This green candle right there. This is a 30 second chart. This is the 30 second chart. This is the same chart, um, be like a hair, a minute before this thing triggered, less than a minute. And look how it played out. I drew, I said, this is a head and shoulders. I drew the I drew the arrow, I copied the link and I pasted it to people who weren't in the live room. They were in the regular chat room, not watching my screen. The rest were watching my screen. It's like, I couldn't cheat. They were literally watching my screen. And then the next tick was this big guy. Whoop. It blew through that. And then after this happened, I drew, the, I added the white line. I said, if they lose the white line, they have another leg lower. And then the bell rang. They almost got there. So yes, we were ready. And here's the other reason why we were ready. A few minutes earlier, they, somebody in the chat room said, in the live room said, they were watching my screen, said, hey, Nick, what do you say? How, how, do, you, how do you feel about the close today? I was like, how do I feel? How about we look at the data? That's almost literally what I said. So I looked at the options and I interpreted the not the open interest because the day was over. So now the volume was more important than the open interest. And I said, if I were a market maker, I'd want it closer to 442, not 443. And they didn't get to 442. But then I pointed out that the put prices were so much hotter than the call prices. And I said, if I were a market maker, I want to price the options based on where I think price is going and which is down. And in the SPX, um, I said uh, uh, there was a, I think, what was it, 4445 was 60 cents or 65 cents. It was 70, and I was talking to jump to 65 and 60. 
and then it ended up to be like 240 or 230. So if somebody paid $60, they could have sold it for $240 per contract. Um, I wasn't fast enough to do it, but whoever wasn't, because I was doing this stuff for them, whoever was in the room uh, surely was able to take advantage of it. But it was fun to watch. It was fun to know that we know the levels that matter. It was fun to know the, the body language of the options and to plan for it and then to see it come to fruition. It just gives us that much more confidence to execute next time. Whether you do it this time or not, you know you can do it. If you can repeat it, and you repeat it and you repeat it. All you need is one of these a day. Two, if you're lucky, three, wow. Okay, and then you go home. This is the life of, say, a futures trader that doesn't want to hold anything overnight. There's something to be said about that. But you have to have what? You have to have a method. Friends, we have 250 people looking out for things all day long. Nick, watch this. Look at this. I'm going along that. I'm going short this. <clears throat> so when the group collaborates, you get better results. So I'll tell you why I was rooting for the bears. Last night, we bought the dip. I said, I'm going to get long the IWM. I didn't catch the very bottom. I started here somewhere. I don't remember. But I said, I want to go out of this week long because the market should rally in relief uh, once this junk about the mess, the garbage about this being a bad week because it's an expiration, monthly expiration, whatever. So I said, I want to buy the IWM. There was also a couple of harmonic patterns that suggested a rebound. And the rebound kind of unfolded after, before the open. I was like, oh, no, <laughs> don't do it. And then fizzle. They fizzled, but then they caught themselves. So that was good. Uh, so we came into the day with IWM longs. And then halfway through the morning, I was like, you know what? It's a big win. It's between 55 and 100% depends on which one you bought. I'm going to lock some profits. And with options, you can do that. You can, quote, lock profits by selling covered calls against them. So my longs, I suggested la yesterday uh, to be long. So Wednesday, t wait, Tuesday, to be long um, to choose next week. Because this week is short, so there's no Friday. I didn't want to use today's contract, which was Wednesday. Wednesday. I thought I would use Monday or Wednesday of next week. I believe it's the 18th and the 22nd or 21st, or something like that. So I chose those two contracts. So today I thought, okay, I'm going to sell a call for expiring on the 13th. And I did. And I did homework. I was like, which one do I want to sell? So I sold the 201, which means I was short at 201. I wasn't, like, uh, wasn't going to lose money, but I would have capped my profits at 201. And it closed at 200.97. With seconds to go, it was over 201. My break-even point was like 35 cents, I think. Um, so I wasn't too concerned about it. It was still a good deal. But look, it closed 200.97. So yes, <laughs> we picked right. I picked right. I don't think anybody else did that. But it was fun to watch it. And I held my ground in this one with seconds to go because of a couple of other things, including the options flow. I looked at the options volume and I looked at what time the orders came in and I thought that if I were a market maker, I'd want them a little bit lower. Not a lot of it, just a little bit. So I figured, hey, you know what? I'm going to chance it. There's, I'm not losing anything, so I'm going to chance it. So I can repeat this tomorrow. So I'm still long the calls for the days I chose and I can sell more calls tomorrow if I wanted to. So if tomorrow we open up, I can repeat the process I did today and sell more calls if I want it to stay long. And if I don't, I can just book my profits. This is how you lock profits by selling covered calls. I think they call them now poor man's cover calls. Um, in the olden days, we just called them calendars and diagonals. That's all you need to call it. Why poor man covered call? Doesn't roll off the tongue. Hey, I did a calendar today. Hey, mine was a diagonal. It's not a calendar, it's a diagonal. But there's the same concept. So you do a vertical, same time frame. You do a calendar, you jump time frames. You do a diagonal, you jump time frames and jump levels, period. All right, so this was a little bit longer than I wanted, but I thought it was, we could have learned something. So the point is, develop some skills, practice them. If they work, repeat. Develop skills, practice them. If they work, repeat. We learned some new stuff in charting today. If you are in the room, you would have seen it. I pulled up a study I've never done before. I was like, let's see if we can figure this thing out. And we did. It helped us trade in the morning. Um, now we have a new tool if you want it. 
I don't need it, but if we want it, it's right there. All right, that's it. If you like this video, hit it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. It's free so far.